All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about the Detroit Lions in tonight's video. I don't care if the second half was ugly. I do not care. 20 to 13 on the road against the Arizona Cardinals, who are coming off a really good game against the Rams one week ago. Uh, folks, all things considered, first off, a win is a win, especially if it's week three. But you're coming off a home loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers one week ago, four point game. And, you know, I get it. Like, this game wasn't the most efficient, and I should pinpoint that more specifically. The second half wasn't very efficient. The Detroit Lions scored zero points, but at the same time, they held the Cardinals to just three points right there at the end of the fourth quarter. And I actually even want to use this time. I don't know what like you know, the Lions discourse is right now with the fan base on Twitter or YouTube or what have you, uh, but just if anybody's freaking out about the efficiency of the offense, you know, Jared Goff, for example, 18-23, to 23, 199 yards, two touchdowns, unfortunate interception very unlike jared um but i get it you know you can say that this offense isn't clicking or they're at least not clicking consistently as far as halves go it was very similar one year ago one year ago the detroit lions were coming off a home loss against in overtime to the seattle seahawks 37 to 31 one week since taking down the kansas city chiefs the defending super bowl champions on the road in arrowhead uh one year ago the detroit lions beat the atlanta falcons 20 to 6 at home against atlanta with desmond ritter uh but i do you know there's context is important it was a really bad football game until the fourth quarter where detroit scored a couple of times i think they outscored atlanta 10 to 0 in that fourth quarter so it was a really ugly game for three quarters my point is you zoom out everything is fine you finally got back to your bread and butter the run game jared goff <laughs> jared goff is going to be more than fine and also this defense really does look great they look great. So before we get any further into tonight's video, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. Uh, we post a ton of Lions videos every single week, at least two or three. So if you try and get this video to 200 likes, folks, that would mean the absolute world to me. Uh, the first half was beautiful. It really was, man. You're going into halftime with a 20 to 10 victor lead, and it just kind of felt like Detroit was ready to run away with it. And you know, to be honest with you, even though Jared Goff only technically threw for 199 yards, he still averaged 8.7 yards per completion. The Lions dominated offensively, all right? What they were just not able to do was put points on the board in the second half. And, you know, penalties certainly played a major component in that. They had nine total penalties for 79 yards. And, you know, the Jared Goff interception was not great, but like you're running the ball. And this was my big kind of issue with Detroit whether it was week one or more specifically week two is it's like you know especially week one now that I think about it with David Montgomery in the first half compared to the second half it's like these dudes the duo wise it's probably the best of the National Football League there's a lot of good running back duo tandems out there but David Montgomery is as good as you come with a veteran running back and it's not like you know, when i say veteran he's 34 years old he's 27 and he's coming off a great year in his first year with detroit last season and you got a kid in jameer gibbs who's still extremely young he's entering his sophomore campaign and you know this afternoon 16 carries 83 yards he averaged 5.2 yards per carry and then most importantly you saw that beautiful trick play of course at the time of this recording i am forgetting what it was it wasn't a lateral sweep um you know, there's a name for it. Of course, when I'm recording this, I forget the name of it. Hook and ladder. They had a hook and ladder, and I believe it was Amon Ross St. Brown who caught the initial pass uh, towards the end of the first half, and he lateraled it. He just literally caught the ball, ran like one or two steps, and then just dropped it off to Jameer Gibbs, and he it was pretty much untouched for 20-yard I don't even know if that's considered a, a reception touchdown. All I care about for my fantasy football team, it was technically classified as a passing touchdown for Jared Goff. But like, that's a good illustration of what this Lions team is capable of. And, you know, we always talked about it in preseason. And we've talked a lot about it in the first couple of weeks. Like, there are times where I feel like Detroit's offense is a little bit too fancy. Um, you know, Dan Campbell made a couple of decisions today, specifically going on it fourth down. And I'm just thinking like, you know, take the points, right? You know, just take the points, kick the punt, whatever it is. Uh, no need to get cute with it. And there are times where Dan Campbell gets cute with it. But, you know, I do think that's an edge as far as Detroit goes. You know, you got to die on your sword. You know, that's the way I see it. Like, if you got the balls to do it, you got to die on your sword. And that's how, unfortunately, the line season ended last year. But, like, you know, offensive versatility, offensive talent, 
you know, it's there and it's clear. And the run game, all in all, David Montgomery, 23 carries, 105 yards, averaged 4.6 yards per carry. He had a touchdown. The Detroit Lions ran the ball 43 times for 187 yards and a touchdown. They dominated time of possession, 37 minutes to Arizona's 23 minutes. They were efficient enough on third down, 6 of 12. They had 373 yards of total offense, and they also only allowed 277 yards defensively. So, you know, one thing I do want to see moving forward, and I it's even crazy to me that I have to say it, and I just getting a little off topic here. It's weird. I, I've mentioned fantasy football twice. Like, obviously, it's fantasy football, and <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But um, as the defending champion, Having Jared Goff and Sam Laporte, it's been a little underwhelming, but it certainly makes my eyes a little bit, tune in a little bit closer to Sam Laporte. Two catches for 36 yards today. Now, keep in mind, he got banged up. At the time of this recording, this was still an undisclosed injury. He actually needed a cart to go into the locker room right before halftime, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, just kind of a weird situation. Sam Laporte's production and target number in the first three games that's something that's just a ticking time bomb. Like Sam Laporta going off with Jared Goff, it's a ticking time bomb. It really is. But Amon Ross St. Brown, outside of Amon, seven catches, 75 yards, and a touchdown. You know, we saw a little bit of Brock Wright, four catches for 34 yards. You know, Jameson Williams was only targeted three times, one catch for nine yards. Tim Patrick had a catch for eight yards. David Montgomery had a couple of catches for 17 yards. I, I don't think... It's a matter of needing more talent wide receiver wise. I think it's just kind of the way the game was going. Yeah, you know, no point in this football game, I was really worried the Detroit Lions were going to lose. And it's a lot better than, say, like week one or week two, where they just kind of forget about the run game altogether. It doesn't always have to be sexy, it always doesn't have to be pretty. And I get it, the expectations this year are much different than this time. You know, when you took down Atlanta 20 to six and scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. Like, I get it, expectations are completely different because you made the NFC Championship game and you're, I mean, literally right there to making the Super Bowl. But it's just week three, and at the end of the day, the Detroit Lions are 2-1, and one, and you got a nice road win on the West Coast in Arizona. It is what it is. You have a hungry team like the Arizona Cardinals. Like, you know, we heard it from Dan Campbell after that NFC Championship loss. Like, you have a target on your back, and at this point, a win is a win. It doesn't have to be pretty. There will be plenty of blowouts as the course of the season goes. Defensively, I thought Kirby Joseph had a phenomenal game, including an interception. Carlton Davis looks great. Brian Branch looks great. Aiden Hutchinson looks great. I like what I see from Terry on Arnold, even though we got to clean up those penalties. At the end of the day, Detroit's second half was just you know, not the prettiest thing. And you want to see points on the board, and it's unexcusable to not put points on the board. But you know, honestly, I... I Watching today's football game, I don't care what the stat sheet or the final score is, I have no concerns with the Detroit Lions, all right? That's just how I feel. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. You know the deal. Uh, but give me your thoughts from tonight's game or this afternoon's game down below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you in a day or two. Peace.